Um, oh, I have to start playing something. So they ideally, okay, so this is where you might want to have the teacher introduce it. At the very beginning, this is going to be played. Um, and you can decide, but if you can play the flute, it's even better. Um, I can play the flute too, but, it would, yeah. <laughs> but she really plays the flute. So you can have this music outside, or you can have it just barely playing. Um, if you have kids coming in from outside, um, it's good to have it just kind of playing as they come in. And so this kind of sets the scene for it. So the kids sit down and you're like, okay, what, what are you hearing in the body? So this, this music, can anyone tell me what instrument is being played or instruments are being played? Does anybody know? Do you want to be the student? Hey, Luke actually shut a couple of those. Oh, yeah, we did that on purpose. Sorry. Sorry. Do you want to sit right there? Okay. So, <laughs> can you tell what musical instrument that is? A flute and a drum. Sounds like a flute, right? It really does, and you can definitely hear the drums. This is actually a recording of the U.S. Marine Corps Band. This band has been around for hundreds of years. So um, it's interesting, I, I downloaded this version of it, didn't realize, but um, our composer and his dad were in this band in the 1800s. So it's kind of cool that I picked that one. So that music is called the White Cockade and the music, the, the instrument you're hearing in this recording, chances are that high note is a piccolo. So that's a little tiny, so I have a picture of a piccolo. Um, so some of you know what a flute is, right? Here's a flute. This is, and you can bring yours from home. So we've got a flute. This is a little flute. And Luke, he got really into the piccolo last year because we were at a concert at Christmas. And he's like, Mom, that's so cool. It's a little flute, and it plays really, really high. Um, and so that um, is the type. Does anyone know what type of musical instrument that is? Is that anybody? Woodwind. A woodwind. Why do we call it a woodwind instrument, Luke? You know? Because it blows wind through it. You blow wind through it, and originally all of them were made out of wood. So that, that's why they're called woodwind instruments. Um, and there are lots of them. And I actually have a poster of all the woodwinds, but I didn't have them with me. But these two you want to make sure you point out. And if you want to go into that, there's not much time, so you might not want to pull out the whole poster. But it has, um, I think it has like six or seven woodwind instruments listed. Um, so what kind of music do you think that is? Thank you. I need you to, yeah, I'll turn it. And you will help me in the actual lecture, okay? Um, what kind of music is that? Does anyone know what kind of music? What does it make you want to do? March, it's actually called march music. And um, originally, march music was played with only two instruments. And the instrument wasn't a piccolo. It was called a fife. It was a very simple instrument. It looked, and this will actually, Devin, this is just PVC pipe. It had, it had little uh, uh, silver, like metal um, bands on it, which I'm going to paint. And this does not play because it's PVC pipe. <laughs> but so that's what... Uh, a fife looked like back then. They were very, very simple instruments. The closest thing we have now to one is a recorder because it's just really, really simple. You just pull the buttons down. If you can see these, these are not nearly as simple as a fife having all, you know, you're, you're pushing on, there's like a hinge along them holding down different, different, um, stop, uh, what are they called? Oh, the pads? Yeah, the keys, the holes in it, they're holding the cover, covering holes. I don't know, I don't, I'm not good at the flute, but, um, so, so piccolos are very rarely used, but some composers and musicians really like the sound of them, so they'll put piccolos, but fifes are almost never used. It, you'll use a piccolo instead because the sound is more clear and it's easier to tune and it's, it's more precise. So there's a story, uh, so do you know, when fifes and drums were used the most, does anyone know how they came about like being used? Battle. In battle, you're right. So that is absolutely what happened. And there's a story about um, a war. Now, when America wanted independence, who knows what the name of that war was? 
the Revolutionary War. Perfect. And so they wanted, they were going to war for independence during the Revolutionary War. And when they would go to battle, they would, they were battling the British who were this huge army and they were in these fancy outfits and they had all these fancy weapons. And a lot of the armies of the, in, the, in America, they were called, the groups would be called Minutemen. And they were, it's so that they could, they were actually called that because they could be ready in a minute. And they were really brave and they were, they would wear their own clothes. They would have to kind of do their own thing and cobble together their own costumes. And then they had to bring their own weapons. And so they got ready and they were really brave, but the bravest people, probably the bravest, were the fifer and the drummer in the very front of the procession that had no weapons. They weren't carrying any weapons. And they had to blow on the fife and drum the drum to get the group marching. So if that wasn't happening, they weren't marching or they didn't march evenly. So they had to set the rhythm with the fife and the beat with the drum. So there's actually a difference between rhythm and beat. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And so there was this famous guy, Luther Blanchard. He was from Boxborough, Massachusetts. And he was a very, he's probably the most famous fifer in the world. Um, he, they were going to battle, the very first battle of the Revolutionary War. And he was taking his Minutemen out. And the British started firing shots. And they all thought these were warning shots to let them know the battle was about to begin. But the British, they were not warning shots. And that first shot was, they call it the shot heard around the world. It started the Revolutionary War. The very first injury was Luther Blanchard got shot in the chest. He was a fifer and it hit him in the chest, but it didn't kill him. He was 18 years old. It didn't kill him. He went to a field hospital and they fixed him up and he actually fought in a bunch of other battles, thought he fifed in a bunch of other battles. But five months later, that, that never did heal. And so he did die from that wound five months later. But Box for Massachusetts has their city seal. So every city has a seal, and it's like the identity of the city. And their seal has Luther Blanchard right in the front of it. It's pretty cool. Now, Fremont has a city seal. It's not nearly as cool. <laughs> this is our city seal. It's pretty cool, huh? So... You might, maybe later you guys can come up with a better Fremont City Seal and submit it to the city because this one's kind of not so great. Um, so this is, to remember, Luther Blanchard, he had, he's on the city seal and in June every year, the city has like a fighting competition in his honor. It's really cool. So he was a big hero because he didn't, he didn't have a, um, ha have a weapon, but he ended up being very, very important. Um, Let's see, so that story takes a little while, so you, you may or may not, but it does bring it, they do bring it in later. So now you're going to talk about the rhythm and beat, um, differences between rhythm and beat. Now there is in the back of your, um, your book, the back of the section, there is a picture of this rhythm and beat thing, and we, I can't find it. I don't know if, um, I don't know if Fame still has it. But it looks like this. It has, it's a treble clef. And this, these hearts are supposed to be the beats. And this is supposed to be the rhythm. Now, problem is, if you know anything about music, the beats actually don't line up right. Um, but it's not clear, I got the rhythm, I got the beat. It's not clear that these are the beats and this is the rhythm. It doesn't, it's not clear. Because we don't have this presentation, or this uh, thing, visual, visual things. I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to um, do it again and show, I'm going to put the rhythm. I'm just going to say the rhythm is next to this and the beats or the rhythm next to the notes and the beat next to the, um, the hearts so that they can understand. You have like a metronome. I do. So, so that's the, that's the other thing that they're going to have us do. So once you'll show that, um, thing and the metronome, unfortunately my metronome is on my phone and, um, and so you'll turn on the metronome, but I actually bought a metronome for fame to have in the fame thing. I'll get it in a couple days. So you'll have a metronome and it's one with a dial. My metronome is electronic and it's really hard to use. You can always download it on your phone. There's tons of apps you can put it on your phone. So that's really easy, but I will have a physical metronome for people that don't have a metronome app. 
So you're going to turn on. So this is an activity with the kids. You're going to divide the class in half. Half of you guys are going to be rhythm. Half of you are going to be beat. So you'll start the beat side first. And you'll have the kids sit there. And they're going to go like this with it. And then you'll, um, with the metronome. other, yeah. So you'll have them with the uh, metronome. You'll have it clicking along with them. So they keep a constant beat. And then you'll have the other class, other side of the class do row, row, row your boat. But they're not going to sing it. They're going to clap it. So they can understand the rhythm is actually set by the music. It's the notes being played is setting the rhythm of it, but the beat is the constant metronome. So they understand the difference between rhythm and beat. And so it's kind of fun. The kids can do that. So if you don't want to do the art project later, you can actually do different songs with them, or you can turn on the music stars and stripes forever. You can turn that on and have them clap where the beat is and do the, cause it's, it's very simple melody. They can clap the rhythm and they can tap the beat. So it's uh, been, it should be pretty clear um, what rhythm and beat is, pretty straightforward. So that's the rhythm and beat. Um, then you're gonna play Stars and Stripes forever. And we, next month is the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> so we get lots of patriotic stuff this year. Laurel, I wonder if the high school would have a uniform you could borrow. I'm gonna ask, and I think Nancy might have one too. So, what kind of music do you think this is? Yes, it's March music again. And this one obviously was, it was written later, so it has more instruments in it. Um, and so this was written by a very, very famous, it was written by the king, the March king, we call him. His name is John Philip Sousa. And so you'll turn on this picture. This is a perfect picture. That's John Philip Sousa. And um, so can you hear the woodwind instruments? Can you hear any flutes or piccolos in it? And earlier in it, it's hard to pick out because for some reason the violins play really, really high and the horns are so loud. But when you get to about two minutes, it's a minute and 59 seconds. Let's see, it's quite, that's where the piccolos start really going. So you can go to that point and then the, now you can really hear the piccolos. So then you'll have them pick out that, oh yeah, that's a really high flute. Sounds like little birds. It does. It, it's a lot like Disney movies when they have little birds over the top so, they, so you can think that out. So how does this music make you feel? Does it make you like dreamy or sad or stupid or anything? Excited! <laughs> so it's exciting and energetic. And so so at this point you'll pause it if it's too um, distracting. Which it's a nice contrast to last week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or last month. And, and it's, it is fun. The kids will recognize the music. It's just as recognizable as the, um, the uh, national anthem. So I think that they'll like it. Um, so then you can talk a little bit about him. And, and John Philip Sousa was a really fun kid. He was, there were nine kids in his family. And he came, so he came from this really big family in Washington, D.C. And he loved music. Loved, loved, loved all instruments. But his dad played the trombone in the U.S. Marine Corps Band. And so he had access to all these instruments and he just loved anything he could blow air to, into. So he loved every horns and woodwinds, he loved everything. But eventually really started loving the violin that became his instrument. And so his dad sent him to a local conservatory, but his professor was so mean to him that he, he said some mean remarks and he kind of withdrew and he wouldn't talk in class and it really affected his education. So eventually he came home and he just said, hey, mom and dad, I want to be a baker. And so his dad was really wise and he said, okay, son, as long as you continue your musical education, you can bake all you want. You can do this. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so you can do whatever you, you know, as long as you do your musical education, you can bake. So it started this, I mean, he was really young at the time. He was like 11 or 12. This was before he was 13. So he started um, baking and, um, and then he was doing at night, he would bake at night, deliver early, early morning, then do his classes all day long. So after a while, he was so exhausted that he didn't, he's like, oh, I can't do it anymore. And his dad said, okay, do you want, which do you want to do? And he's like, forget the baking, I don't want to do this midnight, you know, all this crazy late night stuff. 
And so we went back to music, but he, he had been really withdrawn before, and it really changed him, doing the bakery thing for him. It really changed him, and he worked really hard. He got along with his professor a lot better. And, um, and he ended up, when his final exams, uh, when he took his final exams, he got such high marks on him that he won every medal, every honor that was offered for it at that school. Um, one of the funny stories that has to do with this is he loved baseball, absolutely loved baseball. So he's playing baseball, and he was about to have a violin concert that night, but he didn't get ready for the concert. And he ran straight from his baseball game to the concert. And when he got there, his shirt that he had grabbed to wear was dirty. So his teacher gave him one of his giant shirts. And so I'll try to get one of Felicity's giant, giant shirts. So if you can have it like really long and roll it up and it looks ridiculous, then his teacher pinned it with safety pins. So I'm going to have safety pins kind of hanging from it. So he pinned it. But then during his concert, one by one, the pins popped and his shirt started falling down. And he was so embarrassed, he ended up running off stage so, and, and hiding. He was really, really embarrassed. Um, let's see. Oh, when he was 13, yes, because this all happened before he was 13. When he was 13, he was asked to join the, the circus band. And he really wanted to do it, but he knew his dad wouldn't approve. So he was kind of sneaking. He was going to sneak away, but his dad found out about it. And so he... Uh, he got him enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps Band. So he actually became an apprentice at 13 for the U.S. Marine Corps Band. And then he ended up playing in that for a while. Then he joined an orchestra and got really um, classically trained. And a lot of people put pressure on him to go to Europe and, and do something, like study abroad. And he didn't want to. He wanted his music to be thoroughly American. So he did not go to Europe. And he stayed in the States. And he ended up going back afterward. He ended up becoming the leader of the U.S. Marine Corps Band. He was he was the leader for under five presidents. He was the leader of the, the U.S. Marine Corps Band. Um, and one thing that was interesting, he was a real showman, and he made sure all of his um, the people in his band were very well dressed in white gloves and perfect uniforms. They were very like military. But they um, he developed. He wanted a really loud, full um, horn sound. So the sousaphone that is in, a, in bands, those big, like a tuba, and they have a giant bell that can be turned, is named after him. He invented the sousaphone. And so he was the, he's the, the reason that we have that. Um, but it made it nice because you could turn the bell and you could aim it over the band and, and so everybody can hear it. He lived to be 78 and he was called... Um, yeah, he was called the March King. He absolutely deserves that. And he called each of his marches his... His musical children. He had a hundred. He wrote hundred and five marches, and his favorite was Stars and Stripes Forever. That was his absolute favorite march. And he had been in um, Europe touring, touring, and his manager and, and best friend had died in the states. So when he was on his way back, he actually thought the music up thoroughly in his head, and then wrote it down when he got back. And two days later, it was performed the first time. Everybody loved it, even though it does not sound anything like a funeral march. It doesn't sound sad, but. He wrote it for that, and it became his favorite, favorite. And so every time he had an encore, that would be his encore. So, and then you can ask the kids, if you're in a little class, what's an encore, you know? And so that, um, the, the rhythm one, if the kids is doing the clapping and the, that is too hard for the kids, you can just have them march to it the whole time. You can just have them march to the sound and see if they can get the rhythm. And if they're marching like that, it, some of the kids, you'll be amazed. Some of them can really could. They would be able to clap, row, 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 row. But if you, they can't do that, then just have them march to Stars and Stripes forever. Um, okay. So, so, why do you think that it's called Stars and Stripes forever? It's about the American flag. So, even though it was about his friend, it was about the American flag. And so then the next thing is a conducting exercise. You do not need to do if you don't want to. But it's fun for the kids. So if you know how to conduct music, um, then this is this is what you'd have them do. And they'll do it to you. So you'll actually play the music behind you, and you just have to be able to find the downbeat. So dun 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 dun. Now the metronome I got actually has a 4-4 four four where it accents on the downbeat. So you can and you can that app on my phone does the same thing. So the kids can hear when it's the downbeat. So as long as you time it right, you can hear when it's the downbeat. Um, and then you can conduct with them. So it's one, two, three, four. 
One, kinda two, kind of looks like a sailboat. Four, and it and it does mention it looks like a sailboat. That's why this instead of doing because when I do it, it bounces this way. It actually mm -hmm. looks more like it and sign. But they make make the the um, illustration this way on purpose so that the kids can remember four four ten. So they can do that, and of course the kids can march to that as well. Um, so you can teach them So that. some of those would be good for older kids. It is, and it's an activity if you don't have time to do the art project, but the art project is very simple, it's kind of fun. So um, you just kind of have to balance um, what you want to do here. So at this point, so oh, and I do have white gloves. So if you want to do this as an activity, I have white gloves um, and a chopstick. I have a baton myself, but it's a very expensive conductor's baton. So if I can find somebody that has a cheap baton, we'll do that. Otherwise, I'll just use chopstick. And you can have the kids conduct the music. You can turn it on. And you've got three different suits of pieces on that. So if you wanted to turn them on differently and have the kids conduct in front of the class for it. And, and those of you that know how to do it, you can really help them find the downbeat. If you don't know how to conduct, it is hard to find the downbeat if you don't know how. Um, and so you can skip the whole activity if you don't want to. So um, Those gloves would be good for the beginning too, like the conductor. Yes. If you want. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah, that would, that would be great. Um, I, oh, the other thing is, I need to see, if anyone has small white gloves, these, will, these are Devin's for his Christmas coral thing. If, we have, if anyone has smaller white gloves, that would be better, because these are giant. So anybody that has like white gloves costuming for little kids, I, if, I can't, if, if no one has one, I'll just buy a pair from, on Amazon and... And, uh, put it on. I, I know they have really cheap ones on Amazon. So, if you want to stop that, we're moving.